Hey, good afternoon. This is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be The Round Global Fellowship. I am here with your virtual Bible study. Today, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are talking about the body of Christ. Now, you know, we all have our different definitions for what the body of Christ is. We want to say it's only this church or it's only that church. And sometimes we like to separate ourselves by denominations. Like if, if you're not Baptist, if you're not Pentecostal, if you're not, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, we have our own definitions of the body of Christ. But I want to get here into the Bible and see what the Bible says about being the body of Christ. Would you pray with me before we begin? God, thank you for this moment, this opportunity that we have with each other to uh, study your word. God, please open our hearts and clear our minds. Let us be receptive to your word. God, we just thank you for offering us your son. He sacrificed his life so that we can live, so that we can have opportunities, so that we can make mistakes and still move forward. So God, I just thank you for what you're going to do in this moment. God, we love you, we appreciate you, and we honor you. In your son's mighty name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, now remember, if you need prayer, if there's a specific thing you need prayed about, please go to our website, www.betheram.com. If you go down on the homepage a little bit, you'll see something that says prayer request. Put it in, we'll pray for you. We love praying, we love to be here for you, we love to be here for the community. So make sure you do that. But now let's uh, get your word, copy of the word. I'll put it on the screen, but it's good that you have it too. Let's get into what the Bible says about the body of Christ. Now let's go ahead and start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. It says, a person has only one body, but it has many parts. Yes, there are many parts, but all those parts are still just one body. Some of us are Jews, some of us are not. Some of us are slaves, and some of us are free. But we were all baptized through one spirit, and we were all given the one spirit. So just that. Some of you all may have a call. Some of you all may not be called. Some of you may be preachers. Some of you may be singers. Some of you may be dancers. Some of you may be just called to... Uh, be in the front of the church, the welcoming committee. You may just be a lay member, but we're all part of one body. You may feel like that if you go to church, you got to have a dress down to your ankles. That is perfectly fine if that's what you do. I think what we have to understand, what we have to get over is trying to make the body of Christ like one thing as far as one way as if there's not different parts of the body. It says right here in 12, the body has many parts, but it's still the body. You got to understand, we are still the body of Christ. No matter what part or what, uh, what part you play in that body, you're still part of the body of Christ. Now, as we continue to read, verses 14 through 20 just uh, really confirms what I just said. It says, and the and a person's body has more than one part. It has many parts. The foot might say, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. But saying this would not stop the foot from being a part of the body. That there lets you know that even if you try to talk yourself out of being part of the body of Christ, you still are part of the body. A lot of us may say, I don't feel like I'm good enough or I'm qualified enough to speak. And maybe my church is small, and we only have four or five members. I can say that we're not really a church, but it says right here that just because I say that, just because I say I'm not, I, I, I'm not a part of the body because I'm just a foot, I'm still a part of the body. Verse 16 said, the ear might say, I am not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. But saying this would not make that ear stop being a part of the body. You can't talk yourself out of being what God has called you to be. Verse 17 said, if the whole body were an eye, it would not be able to hear. If the whole body were an ear, it would not be able to smell anything. If each part of the body were the same part, there would be no body. But as it is, 
God put the parts in the body where he wanted them to be. He made a place for each one. So there are many parts, but only one body. You have a place where you are, the part of the body of Christ that you are, whether you are, you know, street ministry, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a, a uh, pastor, whether you're a, uh, a prophet or evangelist, an apostle, we all have our own part. And we can't say that, oh, because I only do this or I'm only good at that, that means that I am not important. Because once again, if we were all like Bishop, if we're all like Pastor Jay, if we were all like Sister Suchy much, then that would be all we had. You have to really value your contribution to the body of Christ. I think that's what this text is saying here, that we are all important, whether you do prison ministry or whether you do popsicle ministry. Everything that you do for God counts, and it does matter. Now, if you think with your regular brain cap on, you'll say that the smaller I am, the less effective I am, the less I'm on TV or the, le the least amount of followers that I have, that means that I am not important. So uh, the title of this slide says importance is not judged by size because we can disqualify ourselves and we can feel like we're not needed. And we'll even let our enemy, and we'll even let our frenemies, we'll even let our family tell us that we're not needed because we're not important. Verse 21 says that I cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the foot, I don't need you. No, these parts of the body that seem to be weaker are actually very important. So you may feel like you're weak, but just because you think you're weak, you're still important. And the parts that we think are not worth very much are the parts that we give the most care to. And we give special care to the parts of the body that we don't want to show. The more beautiful parts don't really need this special care. But God put the body together and gave more honor to the parts that needed it. Think about it. We got some parts of our body that we don't want anybody to see. We close it. You know, we, we put stuff around it. We make sure that without a shadow of a doubt, you're not going to see that part of my body unless I am open with you. I'm trying to make sure you see it. And we cover ourselves up. Those parts that are, it could be, uh, think about something like, you know, our heart, our lungs, all of our vital organs are covered by skin. They're covered by flesh. They're covered by bone. They're covered by muscle. God did this for a reason. So you don't want to you don't want to uh, start a practice of saying that, you know, I'm not needed because I'm just a deacon or I'm not needed because pastor won't allow me to be in the front of the church. Or I've had this sermon written down for three years and pastor ain't called on me to preach it. That does not mean that you're not needed. It could actually mean that the pastor or whoever's the head of your church, they're covering you. They're trying to make sure because you're special because you're uh, anointed, because they don't want the world to have their hands on you yet. It, it's several reasons. But my hands can't tell. My eyes, I don't need you, because I can. Because it works together. What my mind tells my body to do, it does. It all works together. That is how the body of Christ works. We all work together. And I can't say to uh, my my, my partners in uh, ministry that, hey, because all you do is worry about, you know, the alphabet community. I don't need you because I'm not in that community. No, we're all together. Or uh, you're only focused on senior citizens and I'm focused on Gen Z and these are the millennials and this is Gen X. And, you know, we got all these titles. We got all these different things. But at the end of the day, we should all be preaching the gospel. We should all be preaching that you know, uh, G, God loves us. The four, God loves us. Sin divides us. Uh, Jesus came back and he he saved his life. I mean, he saved uh, our lives, our sins. And the question mark is, do you believe him? That's what we should be really preaching, the gospel. Now, the reason that he did this, verse 25 said, God did this so that our body would not be divided. God does not want division in the church. He does not want division in the body of Christ. God wanted the different parts to care the 
care the same for each other. Black church, the white church, the Asian church, the rich church, the broke church. Everybody's supposed to love everybody and care for everybody. If one part of the body suffers, then all of the other parts suffer with it. Or if one part is honored, that all of the other parts is honored as well. I think that's what we have to get as a body of Christ, as a church, as a community of believers. See, we sometimes get in these arguments and we want to argue with each other over doctrine. We don't want to argue with each other over rhetoric, over the way if you should, you know, baptize in, in the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Ghost, or should you just baptize in, in, in the name of God? We got in all these little arguments and we separate ourselves and we're like, you know, I, I'm not this or I'm you Catholic or once again, Pentecost or uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist or you're Baptist or you're Southern Baptist, you know. We get in all these different separations. But the world looks at us and says, y'all Christians, all y'all the same. They don't look at us as if we're different. We look at us as we're different. So if somebody in the body of Christ does something like steal money from the church or, you know, it, you know, has an inappropriate relationship, they say, y'all, church folks, or they got church hurt. They don't have Southern Baptist hurt. They don't have Pentecostal hurt. They have church hurt. That's what we got to understand, that we have to all be on the same page. There cannot be division in the body of Christ. Verse 27 through 31 says, all of you together are the body of Christ. Each one of you is part of that body. And the church, and in the church, God has given a place first to the apostles, second to the prophets, third to the teachers. And then God has given place to those who do miracles, those who have gifts of healing, those who can help others, those who are able to lead, and those who can speak in different kinds of languages. Not all are apostles, not all are prophets, not all have the gift of healing, not all can speak in different languages, and not all, not all can interpret those languages. Continue to give your attention to the spiritual gifts that you consider to be the greatest, but now I want to point you in a way of life that is even greater. So what this is saying, that even in the church, we all have different roles. We all have different parts of the body of Christ. We're different, but we work together. All of us won't be apostles. That's the five-fold ministry of God. Apostles, they plant churches. They're good at order. They plant churches. They can go out and start a church. Then they'll start a church here. Prophets, they foresee, they foretell, they warn. They're not fortune tellers. If a prophet tells you something that God hadn't already spoken to you, then they're probably not a prophet. Prophets bring clarity. And then you have teachers. They're good at teaching God's word, teaching God's people. Then you have the evangelist. The evangelists of those who go out and uh speak about God. They bring people to Christ. They bring people to God. They evangelize. These are those in the community. You may be an evangelist and not even know it. And then you have the pastors. It seems as though pastors are the only ones that get attention in the body of Christ. But that's not the truth. Pastors lead the flock. They guide the flock. They have their hands on the flock. You got somebody planting the church. You got somebody guiding and leading those in the church. Then you have somebody who's going to give clarity to the, to, to the individuals in the church who may say, God, well, you know, you told me something I ain't really understand. And those prophets step in. Then you got the teachers who are going to teach God's word to those people. And just like it says here, pastors might not be apostles. They might not be prophets. Everybody has the gift of prophecy doesn't mean they're a prophet. And they might not even be evangelists. I don't even know that I'm an evangelist and I am a pastor. And I'm okay with that because God's word right here says that we're not all going to have these same gifts. But you need to hone in on the gift that God has given you. Because your gift might be different than somebody else's gift. That might be smaller on a state. You think it's smaller, but God said you're still important. 
we're all part of the body of Christ. So after you watch this Bible study and we've gone over 1 Corinthians chapter 12, my, my prayer and my goal was that you understand more about the body of Christ. You understand that the body of Christ is all of us. Nobody's uh, too little in the body of Christ. Nobody's too big in the body of Christ. We all have a, a, a role and we all have a goal. And if you are new in the body of Christ, if you're small, like, like I said, like you, your, your knowledge is small about the Bible and what God is trying to tell you to do, that does not mean that you're not important. It actually says that when you're, you know, when you're vulnerable, vulnerable, then God will protect you and the body of Christ should cover you. So those pastors, those leaders, those fivefold ministers of the gospel, they should be the ones there. They're, they're going to protect you while you're in your infancy, while you're young in Christ, while you're, you know, just now getting excited. And I think we got to do a better job of that. We need to understand that the body of Christ is all of us. We are many different parts, but we're still one body. And I tell you this, the devil is going to be real upset if we ever get it figured out that we're just one body of Christ. And we ain't there yet. We're getting there. We still got some separation in the church. And when I say the church, I mean the body of Christ. But we are getting there. I promise you there will be a day that we'll acknowledge the one true and living God. And we'll be one body in Christ. Let's pray. God, thank you for speaking this word through me. Thank you for allowing me to go boldly upon the throne and say what you told me to say. God, we're one body in Christ. Please allow us to grow, grow closer as a body of Christ. God, we thank you. We love you. And we pray that this word would nourish our souls, nourish our spirits. And we hope that we got one step closer to you today. In your mighty name we pray, amen and amen, amen. So if you like this Bible study, make sure that you share it with somebody. Somebody that you want to put in the game, let them know that, hey, I want you to learn a little bit more about this Bible, a little bit more about this body of Christ. And guess what? When you share it, now you are an evangelist. Yep, just that simple. You might not be out in the streets, hey, man, you know what I mean? But now you are an evangelist because you are sharing the gospel. Hey, I hope to see y'all Sunday. Make sure you log in, be the ram.com. I got a word, we're still on the Bible study series on women. So make sure you log in. We're talking about, let me just go ahead and tell you, we're talking about Potiphar's wife. And if you know anything about Potiphar's wife, you know this one's going to be juicy. So make sure you turn in. Turn in and tune in. God loves you, so do I. That's it, that's all. And goodbye. See you next week. See you Sunday.